How to, how you do cousins? It's Rusty here and today we're going to be talking about postcards. Collectible ones, artist signed ones. I'm going to teach you how to research them to find out where they're from and how they're valuable. Come on over guys, let's get to it. Rusty, how to. As you can see here, folks, uh, I've got uh, quite a task before me today. I'm going through and I'm sorting all of these postcards. These are things that I have, uh, and this is just one of the boxes, but these are ones I have hand-picked, personally picked out uh, over the course of this last year that have not been listed yet. Um, these are not postcards, obviously. These are some black and white photographs um, from a, somebody took a trip on a, a cruise line, the SS Columbia in 1935. Uh, kind of cool. You can see the old boat there, but anyhow, I'm going through to sort these out in similar groups. Uh, so like I got some that are right here, you can see are, are sports related, like arenas and such. And then I got others that are all kinds of different um, categories. So I need to go through this, but I wanted to uh, actually, as I was going through this, I thought it might be fun to do a video and uh, show you some of these specific artist postcards, talk about um, types that would be good to list right now because of holidays coming up. And um, and show you some ones I just picked up in the last couple weeks that I'm excited about. Let's go, guys. The stuff you're going to want to be listing right now, uh, which is into March here, is Easter cards. Why? Because Easter is the next holiday coming up, and the demand for these is going to be at an all-time high. Got a big stack here, but what I wanted to show you is just a handful of these to give you an idea. Anytime you have an animal that is dressed up and acting like a person, they call that an anthropomorphic uh, postcard. These things, there's collectors that collect this specific stuff, and these all will sell probably $10 or more each. Here's one of a rabbit, uh, you know, taking photos of other rabbits. <laughs> a lot of times they incorporate rabbits or uh, chickens, roosters. Uh, they're eating eating dinner together. Here's a, a a fox, looks like, or no, a cat, I guess, with the, a rooster there grabbing his tail. Um, all kinds. Here's like some sort of a, I don't know, a gnome or some kind of other creature. Here's some rabbits on a train. And the list goes on. They're dancing around an egg, carrying an egg in a cart. Uh, these kinds really, I mean, they're just neat. Uh, this like, it's kind of an interesting uh, idea. Uh, this was like a big deal back in a certain time period during the early 1900s, late 1800s, uh, is, is this kind of stuff. And all of these, as you can see, is artwork. I mean, somebody came up with this idea and drew and hand painted this stuff. A lot of these are embossed. Uh, let's see if you can see, here you go. Uh, you can kind of tell that through the, the, the plastic there, but it's, it's got a texture to it. They press that down on a press, um, and, uh, and gave it that texture um, around those characters and stuff. So this is the kind of stuff, guys, you want to be on the lookout for uh, for Easter time because people are, are already starting to buy this stuff all the way up until Easter. And then after Easter, you need to look for the next holiday start getting those up. Just want to show you a few that I'm excited about getting on a uh, list in here soon that I came across the last month or so. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but there uh, there are all kinds of different uh, types of uh, stuff that postcards have been made out of other than just paper. Leather being one of them. These are made of leather. So don't be a sucker all your life. <laughs> and uh, this one here says, uh, I got a kit coming. It's like tooled leather, hand painted. This one went to Kansas City, Missouri. Look at that. That's my home state, believe it or not. Uh <clears throat> And then here's some different ones I'm just going to kind of roll through and show you. These are all the ones I've picked out I think will sell pretty well. This is from right around the mid-1940s, uh, right towards the end of World War II. These are some naval officers or people in the Navy, and they've caught this big old uh, uh, shark. I mean, look at that. This is a, what they call a real picture postcard. Um, it's, it's, it is a real photograph on photographic paper, but it is made into a postcard. And that's just, I mean, I'm probably, I may be the only one and probably am the only one in the world that has this particular picture, this particular postcard. And that's why these are collectible because, uh, you'd be the only one to have an interesting scene. Here's one. I like these aerial views whenever they're older because, you know, things change over time. This particular one's at the great highway of, uh, of the beach, <laughs> the beach, um, San Francisco. And so, uh, man, guys, how different does this beach look now? Do you think, uh, from look at all those old cars and then people right here on the beach. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, based on these buildings, a person who knows this area could probably determine, uh, exactly what beach this is and where this was taken at. 
and around the time. I don't know the time period. Well, 1933. Okay, so uh, this is what the beach looked like in San Fran, around San Fran, 1933. Here's one. Thanks for taking two parking spaces. I had to park two blocks away, you stupid, inconsiderate, you know, B-word. Uh, <laughs> it's really an old card, but like, what? So, you know, and I don't know, this, I guess, isn't a postcard. Maybe somebody just printed this up to put it uh, on someone's car. It's kind of ridiculous, right? Here's one of uh, Buffalo Bill. It says Colonel W.F. Cody. And so I don't know. I'm assuming this is actual Wild Bill. Uh, Buffalo or Buffalo Bill. Uh, it could be an actor, someone made to look like that. I, I really don't know. But again, this is a actual photograph. Uh, and this was done in uh, 1934. And I need to do research. Like, when did Buffalo, when was Buffalo Bill alive? When did he die? Um, and see, I, but I think, you know, that may actually be him. Uh, here's one of a natural disaster, a flood. So again, guys, when you can find pictures like uh, uh, buildings that burned, uh, recently, or and it sounds really kind of strange uh, that people would care about this sort of thing, but um, and again, this is like a neighborhood scene, right, of some of houses. So I don't know is this uh, where where this took place at, and it doesn't say on the back. It wasn't used either, but this is an actual um, real photograph of something that happened probably down back in the in the in the probably the twenties or the thirties, based on uh, cards I've seen like this, same paper in similar condition. Moving on here, uh, we got one here, uh, and I don't usually uh, sell stuff that, that has to do with uh, particular races of people and stuff, because I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't sell stuff in the black Americana uh, category and stuff, because I don't like to glorify, you know, old stereotypes and old, old things like that, but this particular one says Chief, and it says Turkey Track and Sioux, so this may be a, a Native American in the, of the Sioux tribe, and he's got a, looks like he's got a, a holding on to a turkey there. Um, it's an actual photograph, so this was taken back in probably uh, the the late 30s, early 1940s. Um, I'm going to hold on to that one because I want to talk about that in a second um, differently. Uh, but, okay, let's go to this one here. Uh, what do we got here? Entrance to Edinburgh Snake and Alligator Farm in Edinburgh, Virginia. This dude's got a big old snake. <laughs> He's got some kind of textiles, looks like or rugs in the back there, little baskets. He's just standing out in front of a house, uh, but he is proud of that snake. Um, what we got here is a, a military, uh, so, so where is this at? Running obstacles in Camp Cook. Okay, so it'd be real easy to just look up Camp Cook. Where was that at? But this is, again, probably 1940s. I'm guessing early to mid-1940s. Uh, and this is people in the military doing their, running their training, uh, preparing for, for, uh, the, you know, military stuff that they got to do. Uh, and then we got, this is another one, uh, people in the Navy here. It says they're in Catalina. And we've got uh, what looks to be a float, and we got a woman up here, who maybe like a mermaid woman and a man. And there is, and I need to go back and look. This was not used, uh, but this is a real photograph, guys. And there's a particular um, type of ceremony that people in the Navy uh, probably still do, and they have to do with when they cross uh, the equator or the, uh, the meridian lines, and there's a name for it, and they, when they do this, when they go across it, it's a, they, there is a certain name for it, and then if they come back across, um, uh, they, they, they have, there's something else that they call it as well, I wonder if it says that on there, I can see the white, what does that say, let me see, get up in the light here, it's so, uh, I would have to, ooh, it says 1925 on there, so, wow, a long time ago, guys. Navy. That's really cool looking, though. So they have this ceremony. Um, I'll have to look that up. But that's the kind of stuff like you may not know about that. Research that because if you find pictures like that, that can be uh, that can be quite valuable. Here's one I just absolutely love, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to sell it. But uh, these guys are dressed up. Uh, I don't know if this is Halloween or if they were putting on some sort of a play or what. But I mean, look at this. He, he this guy here on the left kind of looks like. Um, you know, William Shakespeare a little bit. Uh, but then we got these other people dressed up with wigs and hats. <clears throat> looks like maybe they, they, they were doing some sort of uh, a play for school. But there's an old school in the back here, there. It's an actual photograph. It wasn't used. Great condition. Uh, that was exciting to find. And then next to last year, got this one. Is uh, uh, It says, leaves the Park Hotel, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. It's a sightseeing or sightseeing. Uh, around the uh, the hotel and maybe around the village there. I don't know what town this is. I don't know what hotel it was, but cool to see this old vehicle from the 1920s. Um, 
on this postcard, and I say 1920s, oh, 1909, even older than I thought. Uh, tourist photographer, J.A. Hollingsworth. Oh, here we go. Uh, Park Hotel in Jacksonville, Florida. So this is in Florida. Um, someone might be really interested in that. Maybe somebody who lives in Florida. All right, moving on. Now I'm going to talk about this one. Now, guys, uh, I wanted to show you this particular postcard and just say the cool stuff you can find when you find these old photographs. Um, when you see something like this, you can barely make out kind of what's going on here. There's no street signs. So it's like, well, how do I know where this is and how do I know how to find it? I like to take a magnifying glass or something like this, and I'm just going to kind of put it up here so you can kind of see. Uh, all of a sudden now, you can see a lot better what's, you know, sorry, what's going on. We got the Joel store. We got Peterson Mercantile Company. Look at that poster for the Union Pacific. Look at how they have that stuff displayed in there. These old cars, super cool. Christie's and old Christie's. Um, back in here, you look a little bit further. The Rexall store, some sort of a a, a store there. Again, uh, what do we got down here? Light, electric power, gamble stores. Um, so neat. But again, we still don't know where is this? Where is this place? Well, guess what? If you look down here, two cool things that I came I came across. One, let me get this centered correctly. And there we go. Okay. Moving over. Right here. Page County Bank. Also, I know that this picture was taken right around 115 in the afternoon. Because look at that clock. <laughs> Super cool. So then what I did was I looked up Page County. Page County, and I came across this right here, Page County, Clarinda, Iowa. Uh, when I looked it up first, it said Clarinda, Iowa. Then I looked up Page County Bank in Clarinda, Iowa, and then look, we got these pictures, and then look over here. Somebody has taken an old uh, a picture here. Uh, where was the old one I found? Here's the old one. Boom, right here. Click. And if I take and I look at this, and I pull up my postcard. Look at that match right there. That's it, folks. They changed the top of it a little bit. You can see the door and the window are the same. And if you slide down, again, they changed the color of the brick and stuff over time. But this is the same street, guys. And it says Page County Bank, Clarinda, Iowa. Someone took this old photograph a long time ago. Now, if I put this down... I get rid of this dark, uh, this uh, old one here, and then I find one of the newer ones and see what it looks like today. Pull this back up. This is in the early 1900s, this one that I've got. And this is, there it is. It's got a little bit of a makeover. Look at the ones next to it. Look how much newer that design looks now. What a super cool uh, postcard. Just because of the old cars, you can see how these old main streets uh, used to be uh, set up, how wide those streets are. Holy cow. Um, and uh, and so, and you see that bank at the time. Now, again, right down here, it does say Clarinda, Iowa. So, in white, very faint, uh, it says something square, south side of the square. So, you can see that on this card. But I was trying to give you an example of how do you find stuff on this. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of detective work and look it up and find. In this particular case, by finding that county and that bank, I was able to figure out where this was. A lot of these stores, though, were not just local stores. These were like regional or international chains that were in all kinds of stores. And so just knowing that that store's there doesn't necessarily help you find it. But I thought that was super cool. Just wanted to share that with you today. Guys, when you see these old cards, look them up. You might find a rare town. Maybe the town doesn't even exist anymore. Maybe uh, something really famous happened in that town or in that particular spot and so someone might be collecting it so make sure you do your research look them up i wanted to talk to you for just a moment here about artist postcards i've done this on a couple of videos or at least one before you can check those out if you get a chance but i'm going to really talk about three today uh, they're my three favorites they also happen to be some of the most collectible ones which is a bummer for me because i'm gonna have to pay high prices if i want them but um this, and I'm going to throw like a, a fourth one in here, which is, uh, I just think kind of fun, uh, but not someone I necessarily uh, look for a lot. But it's this particular, I've got three cards here from this one artist, E. Curtis. Uh, I just think that they're interesting, uh, you know, little drawings of little people, but their heads are different types of, um, of uh, fruits or vegetables. And uh, 
We are too young, dear. <laughs> Dearest Valentine, you are the apple of my eye. Was you, uh, dear Valentine, you do beat all the others. <laughs> Uh, what does it say? We are too young, dear. We, we something. Oh, we can't elope. <laughs> we can't elope. Oh, that's, that is uh, just, uh, that is like a gold ring. That's great. Uh, so that's fun. Took me a second there. Man, I gotta drink some more of this coffee. Hold on a second. Mm. Wake up, Rusty. Okay. So here we go. The the three we're talking about for just a moment here is going to be Frances Brundage. This was a, a female artist. Uh, she, um, let's see, I wrote it down here, 1854 to 1937. Uh, and well, the thing I love about this one and the next one we're going to talk about, Ellen Clapsaddle, is that these were two very prominent artists, female artists, who were working real hard Um which in, in, during a time when, uh, sadly, women were not um, given opportunities to to have jobs like that a lot of times outside of the homes. But these women uh, were just exceptional artists, and they, for whatever reason, were given that opportunity, which I think is awesome. And uh, and so they have become very collectible, and it's because their art is fantastic. So you can see this is what the um, the signature looks like, Francis Brundage there. And uh, she's well known particularly for her faces. That's how I typically look before I even find a signature. Uh, usually I can tell by just the look of the art itself. It's very well done. You can see uh, it's like these children, very rosy cheeked sort of thing. You can see again these rosy cheeks with these eyeballs kind of popping out. But uh, definitely like uh, captures that childlike kind of cartoonish look a little bit. Um, you can see there's the signature there, Francis Brundage on that one, and then this one here on the left there. So most of, not not necessarily most, a lot of them are signed. Um, I would say the Ellen Clapsaddle, a little bit different. Her signatures are a lot of times kind of hard to see. You can see that right there um, because the colors, it's kind of hidden a little bit. And then about half the time, they're not signed. And so the only way you would know if it's hers is uh, there are books out there. Or you can kind of do some, some research on which ones are hers. Um, but Ellen Clapsaddle, she was 1865 to 1934. She's probably one of the most prolific uh, artists of the, uh, the early 1900s. Postcard, beautiful uh, condition here. This one's not been used, and you can see how that is embossed and pressed. Uh, same thing with these. Um, well, that one's pretty used, but you can see how that's embossed there, uh, pressed down into the into the uh, paper. <clears throat> But Ellen Clapsaddle, uh, this is just one example. Uh, she's got a lot of really cool Thanksgiving ones and some really, really beautiful Christmas ones that I like quite a bit. So these two, these two uh, artists, I think are, are pretty awesome. And then the last one is someone named Samuel Schmucker, which I am, I don't have any, at, you know, at the warehouse right now. I've sold out most of them. So I'm, I'm looking for them. But I'm just going to show you on eBay some of these ones that have sold. You can also see how valuable these are. Some sell for hundreds of dollars, uh, hundreds over $100 for an individual card, and then in some cases uh, in lots. But particularly for uh, for Halloween cards, you can see this one right here. And just look at the artwork on that, uh, that woman holding that uh, pumpkin. It's really cool. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the screen, so it's kind of fuzzy there. But I'm just going to kind of scroll up and let you see. Again, a lot of these that are selling for good money are ones that are Halloween themed. I came across this, and about my jaw dropped because... Uh, this, uh, I had this postcard <laughs> not long ago, and I, actually before I did this video, I went back to see if I could find it, and it's been, it's been more than 90 days, so I can't see the sale. I'm almost certain I sold that thing for 20 to 30 bucks, and it's because I did not know that it was, uh, it was Sam, old Sammy, and, uh, someone cherry-picked that sucker for me, uh, for a better price, and good for them, because I didn't get my, I didn't do my full research, I need to do that. Uh, but anyhow, I really like, uh, here's some, some Valentine ones, some Christmas ones. He did all kinds of different, uh, here's the same one again. That particular one seems to be selling pretty well. Um, if I go back to ones that haven't sold, uh, let me go back down here. I'll maybe show you a couple of my absolute favorites. Uh, I'm going to put it at highest that they're asking uh, price here because I know we'll come across it. Uh, some of these, look, people are asking four, $500 dollars. 
uh, for some of these individual postcards. So this guy is incredibly collectible. Um, I just really love uh, his artwork. Uh, pumpkins. Um, I'm, I'm looking to see. Maybe I need to do, you know what? I'm wasting your time here. Let me see if I can do, I'm going to look up Halloween. Uh, I'm going to put this in the search here. Um, see if I can do it while holding this camera. All right. Yep. So I, I like this one. There's one where the, the figure is wearing a red robe. Um, maybe I mispronounced the, misspelled the name, but this giant moon here is, is really cool. Um, the artwork guys is just, it, it floors me. I'm an art lover. Uh, I like to, to buy art to sell and, and if it's nice enough, I like to keep it down at the warehouse for a while. So look, be on the lookout for this stuff. Very kind of Victorian looking women, uh, pictures, um, here's that same one. If you remember that one with the Native American woman, uh, the Thanksgiving postcard. See, this is the exact same kind of base, same heart here. But now this is a Valentine. Uh, this is a Valentine one with a, a different woman in front with a different dress. So kind of same uh, basic structure. Again, here's that heart. But now you got a woman with a tennis racket. Same heart. But so there's a whole series of these that were done similarly, but with some differences. And some people collect those specifically, but... Well, I'm not seeing the one I love, but keep an eye out, guys, for this stuff. Ellen Clapsaddle, Francis Brundage, and Samuel Schmucker. A lot of Schmucker stuff is not signed, but it's done by the um, the Winch Company. It, look out for John Winch as a as a, um, a a maker of these postcards, and also Raphael Tuck. And uh, Tuck cards and Winch cards uh, by themselves can be highly collectible. So keep a lookout for that stuff, guys. Good, good luck hunting. Guys, all this talk about postcards makes me want to find some postcards. Let's take a quick trip and see if we can't find something we're selling today. Mm, here you see quite a bit here. Oh, it's going to take me a bit. All right, guys, here's a great example of stuff for right now these are some good ones for easter we got uh, a rabbit here these are beautiful great condition embossed colored artist like really good uh, artistry uh, postcards here downside is they're wanting 375 a piece for them here's some examples of black and white real picture postcards basilica of guadalupe in mexico this was one in mexico they're out on a river it's pretty awesome then here's one it's artist signed you can see hospitality you can see the artist signature there here's one of a real photograph some jewish men in israel really old real picture postcard they want three bucks for that one all kinds of ones down in here there's one that's an actual Photograph, you can see that three dollars. I'll have to spend some time flipping through some of these here. I will not waste your time watching me do that. However, maybe I'll find something interesting. Again, we're looking for artist signatures, real photographs like that one that I pulled up there, and uh, and other. Other interesting ones. Here's one. <laughs> no signatures. I'll find one. Guys, I'm in the same spot here, and there's a few I've picked out just to kind of give you an idea. Great example of a real picture postcard that's worth something here. Bird's eye view from school, Wild Rose, Wisconsin. Um, I have no idea. Let's see. Can't tell by the cancellation exactly how old it is. But it's got a nice little, um, you know, uh, uh, right in there, a little message. This one says, Abert, Lake Rim, Lake County, Oregon. It's kind of cool. Then we got some of these old, really old ones of, uh, here's a woman with some flowers. Here's a guy sitting there with his little girl. Uh, she's got a little cross necklace on there. This guy looks like he's in some sort of a military garb, sitting in a nice chair. That's awesome. And here's one. It's just some, some guys on horses. It's really old. And you see this section here? 
either below a line of white or this line on the side, you know it's pretty, pretty old. This one here is a public library in Moline, Illinois, 1912. It's pretty cool too. Oop, knocked that one off. And this is an example of a real picture postcard that someone has come in after the fact and tinted. Hand tinted. Pretty cool. Here's even more, guys. Tell you what, this place has several of them. And if you didn't know, by just looking at the front of them like this, you would think that it was just a photograph. So you gotta turn it over and take a look. Sometimes postcards. You never know. All right, I'm gonna dig through this for a second. Here's an example, guys. I found just a couple here. Well, I've got them dropping them on the floor. It's not good. Uh, here's a nice postcard. You can see, here's the artist, Cooper, number eight. That's in a series. And there's a couple more from, looks like to be a French artist of some kind. Uh, some sort of a, a war-related one, but you can see the signature there. Same thing here on this one. There's that signature. Sometimes you'll come across binders or booklets that have old postcards in them. This one's, we're asking $75. So my job is to look through this and figure out, is the stuff that's in here worth that? If I break it up and sell it individually, here's one of these, what they call exaggerated postcards. It's the Shriners Electrical Parade. It's kind of cool. Got some other, definitely some old ones. Really old uh, photograph here of a train car. That could be worth something, another train depot. Old uh, planes and trains can be valuable. What do we got here? Oh, look at that. It's an old marching band. That's a real photo. That's right, looking better, looking better. Not quite sure. Some of these standard, standard views, standard scenes. Hmm. Golf course. No, tennis. Nice. Old stuff here, and more train related stuff. Holiday Inn. Got some old ones and some new ones here, it looks like. I don't know, 75. It's a little steep. If it was 50, I might consider it. And here she is, folks. I got her home. Uh, this is not the only one I got, but this is one I definitely wanted. Bird's Eye View from school. It's pretty cool. Mmm. I received your nice letter. And the battery thank you very much <laughs> that's great uh guys if you like this video and videos about postcards uh consider subscribing if you haven't like it uh if you could and uh hit that bell icon so that we can uh make sure to inform you or youtube rather can let you know every time we're going to drop some more of these got lots of stuff we're just trying to give you information to help you out uh thanks so much cousins take care rusty 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 hair too rusty Rusty, 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 rusty